Hello YouTube, good evening from uh, sunny Liverpool in the UK. Um, today's live is done by um, sort of me thinking about things and I've just recorded um, two episodes for my YouTube channel so I, I would have to keep uh, this live short because I want to A, give you as much value as possible, but B, uh, I want to go into editing um, those two episodes. They're actually going to be very good episodes, I think, on my YouTube channel. And um, what I was talking about uh, on my YouTube channel, um, so I, the two episodes that I recorded were about... Um, one was very philosophical. Uh, you would have to bear with me on this one. Uh, you're going to enjoy this one, no doubt. And I need your contribution on that as well. Um, the second one was about a, um, a company and a website that i come across recently. They was talking about uh, some fantastic ways of saving uh, using eBay. So they basically, what they did, they... Uh, come up with some um, algorithm and some uh, filters. They created some special filters on eBay so you can go out and check what they are finding on eBay and they're finding some great stuff on eBay. So so bear with me. Um, these two are going to be edited soon. So we're going to be um, live on those episodes probably tomorrow and on um, Wednesday, I believe, right? Okay, so what we are talking about today is um, 10 reasons to enjoy your clothing more. Um, and again, it's a, it's a bit more um, sort of philosophical, but it has got some meat to it as well. So I prepared some notes as well, so I'll be uh, sort of looking into some notes and give, just to give you, you know, the, the the biggest possible value I can. Uh, because what I've noticed um, is that a lot of people on forums actually are talking about brands and buying value. And that's the first reason is that we have to somehow stop ourselves from thinking about uh, buying value only. Um, at the moment, we think that um, if there is bigger reduction in price, if an item goes from you know a hundred pounds to twenty pounds, it means that it's obviously um, uh, extremely good quality, and we should definitely buy it. We cannot pass on that uh, particular promotion, but maybe that's not necessary. You know, maybe we have to start thinking about okay, um, a do I really need it? And that's, that's my first reason of thinking uh, how we can enjoy our clothing more. Do I really need it? Does it really suit me? Uh, you know, was I really uh, sort of shopping for that previously? All those things in mind uh, when you sort of buying your clothes online or, or in store. Um, try, try to like them before you buy them kind of thing. So don't buy just because... Um, you know, there is a huge reduction or a shop is doing some sort of a crazy promotion just to lure you in. But actually, consider that and think about whether you, uh, whether you actually need it or not. Right, I can see some question popping. Let me just see what are the question. Um, let me just have a look. Right, okay. Brilliant. I think there's some question popping. I They disappeared now. I don't know whether I can somehow see them. Doesn't matter. Let's go to a uh, second reason why and how you can enjoy your clothing more. Um, it's somehow connected with the first one where you have to really start thinking about, do I really like it or do I love it? Was I, I was, for instance, today, I was shopping for some items 
in Chesh Rokes, and you can obviously check out my Chesh Rokes video um, in the link above. I'm going to link it up. So I was I was in Chesh Rokes actually um, trying to find some items, and I actually I only bought one item that I really loved that I knew I'm going to be using, and I knew I was searching for it. Um, the other two items I bought. Do I really need them? I don't know. One of those items is this shirt. I really liked it. Um, but was that item that I really um, sort of was searching for? No. But that still doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It just means that I didn't plan very well. But on the other hand, I didn't know that I may like something. So, you know, it's sort of, you just never know what you're going to find when you go to stores. But you really have to love it. And when I saw this shirt, even though it's, uh, I think it's like XL, I'm usually wearing sort of large and um, and mediums, depends on the store. All of a sudden, this shirt was slightly too big, but it was kind of relaxed fit to it. And I thought, well, maybe maybe I can still pull it off. Maybe I can still use it. Maybe it's still okay to buy it, um, which was, you know, which was inexpensive to buy. Therefore, I bought it. But it was... Um, to me, when, as soon as I bought it, I was thinking, do I really need it? Am I going to... And, and I was starting looking at what are all the pieces in my wardrobe that I could actually combine and, uh, and see the value, what else I can wear it with. And I can easily see that being worn with, you know, dark jeans, darker colors, like I've thrown this jumper on just because... Uh, just because I saw um, sort of that uh, working well with, um, with that color. I've got... I've got Jose or Joe's or Jose, Jose, maybe Joe's clonker saying just bought a suit supply suit on eBay. Shoulders may be one centimeter too small. Doesn't make a very big difference. Uh, Joe is asking uh, if you again, look, going back to what is the topic of today's uh, live video. If you bought something and you really research it, like, for instance, you research suit supply and you think, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really digging it. You know, suit supply is something that I, I wanted. I maybe cannot afford or don't want to buy uh, straight off them. So maybe eBay is your best choice. And I sold my suit supply suits on eBay as well. Uh, I think I had seven suits uh, and, I, uh, and I sold six of them. So I think I've got only one suit left uh, on, on my suit supply. And... Um, and that was the best way to do it. And what I found is that especially people in America were buying them. Uh, so I guess you, you must be from, from there or from around there because in, in suit supply in America is actually quite expensive comparing to everywhere else. Uh, but if you look at the... Um, but if you look at... I'm just looking at suit supply website to see what they've got. Oh, Germany. There you go. Um, <laughs> in Germany, it's... It, yeah, it's okay. I don't know. I don't know how, how eBay works in Germany. Whether you're happy with with how it is, um, but I would say that um, if the shoulders are slightly too small, one centimeters too small, so probably you bought instead of let's say forty, you bought thirty-eight. Is that what you mean? Is 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 that how you class one centimeter? Is that what you how you how you say it? Um, because if that's the case, then. You cannot really let shoulders out. So that's the sort of difficult part. Um, can you live with that? If it's just one size smaller, if it is one size smaller, I mean, tell me what size you're normally wearing and where you are. Um, normally, I have 40 centimeters, 47 centimeters on my jackets, and that should should have about 46. Um, hmm. It's a problem <laughs> because if the shoulders were slightly bigger, you can technically, and I know on some of my, my videos I said you, you cannot, you shouldn't really um, buy a suit that doesn't fit you. But if it's slightly too big, you can actually sort of take it in. And if the seamstress is uh, sort of extremely well prepared for that, she can actually cut it in an angle. So, you know, she can probably take in a centimeter. So it takes... Like a like a week or a couple of days for someone to do it. It takes um, you know it takes some doing, um, but it's possible. If it's too small, the only thing I can I can advise on is um, because I would assume if it's too small here, it probably pulls your 
uh, your sleeve as well and probably you're concerned about that I would imagine so um, so maybe you can let go some of that sleeve as well <laughs> no I mean you, you have to just try it because um, if if it's sort of too small yeah if it's sort of too small it may actually pull up the sleeve I don't know whether you're regular long or short I don't know what size you bought but maybe you can sort of let out so if this is sort of pulling that direction obviously you know the entire um yeah regular so that there's going to be enough material there to to definitely to to add another centimeter there right there you go so you're a very regular dude um I, I i think you're going to be all right you know i think you're going to be uh, be all right it shouldn't be any problem especially if you if you love that suit, if you if you bought it because you either like the brand or you liked the um, the way it it looked, well, you're gonna rock it anyhow, right? If it's slightly too small or slightly too big, so it should be alright. Bobby Reed was I don't know Bobby whether you're still here. Sorry, I, I, I missed a question. Why are you wearing this FW outfit? Is it cheetah? Right. Okay. It it was when I started this. Um, but I had someone coming into the room telling me that oh fall winter right uh, yes it was it was chilly it was actually like 14 degrees here in Liverpool Celsius um, but it's actually steaming hot right now so uh, I, I I feel um, yes I, I I feel it right now so maybe we can uh, we can take that off um, anyhow continue on. Um, I always argue with this. What's cheap and what's expensive? You know, Jose was uh, was saying uh, that Joe's hose, Joe's, hmm. uh, yeah, was saying that uh, he he bought a suit supply suit, and I um, and I would argue how often um, you would actually buy something that you don't like, or how often you would go and buy something that is just cheap. Um, and it doesn't give you a value and you don't you don't see the, the the sort of value per se and you have to um, sort of justify it after you've purchased it um, I argue loads of times and I will tell you again that it doesn't really matter how much you pay for an item it, it, it matters how often you are going to wear it because if you're going to wear something 20 times and you bought it for uh, you know 20 pounds it's a pound a wear right but if you spend 20 pounds on an item and you're going to wear it once it's a lot more expensive all of a sudden right so you have to love your clothing you have to like it don't just buy it because it's cheap right i bought some shoes previously for like you know six seven pounds ten dollars never wore them once <laughs> expensive they are very expensive to me, you know. Um, don't end up with a wardrobe full of things that you don't like. So that's my number four. Um, because you're going to end up in a wardrobe that actually doesn't fit well. It It's not a, a comprehensive, you cannot just sort of mix and match things easily. Um, they're going to be lots of standalone, on its own items. Um, don't be that guy, you know. Don't be a guy who is uh, whose wardrobe looks, you know, miserable because he, he cannot match uh, the fabrics, colors, um, you know, um, sort of seasons. Nothing, right? So don't be that guy uh, that sort of bought something. It's it's you know it was a, some sort of impulse purchase. Um, good. Another reason. Number five, don't buy things just because you saw them on Instagram. And I saw um, uh, Hosa was saying about uh, PT and um, and you know and, and, and PT videos and PT pictures and whatever else. Um, and I think that lots of people looking up on Instagram, other style influencers and other people who are in this niche. And uh, all of a sudden you try to look like them, but they very often, especially on PT, PT is a theater. PT is a, is a sort of, it's a, it's a playground for everyone to be part of. And that playground is, um, is free for all. I mean, the more wackier, the more yellower, the more uh, pinker you look, um, sort of more chances you're going to end up on Vogue, 
Thailand website or GQ, uh, you know, Kazakhstan or whatever else, you know, very sort of important style creation websites. So you have to be sort of aware of that. And um, Bobby's saying he's in Los Angeles and it's and it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Like, I don't want to talk to you, Bobby, anymore. Um, a, you were in Los Angeles. B, you've got full summer on. But, you know, the thing about Liverpool and UK summer is that you can actually layer, layer up. And I love to layer up. I, know, I, lo I love having a shirt and a jacket and a shirt and a sweater and a shirt and something else on. So I actually like that. You know, I, I don't mind that. Um, okay. Um, how's I was saying okay perfect thank you just found your channel yesterday and I just enjoy how you are uh, not making the top five style mistakes if you know what I mean right okay I know lots of uh, I think what you're referring to is that uh, I don't make videos about um, you know five style mistakes that you should avoid kind of video I've, I have some suggestions to make those I have not made them yet I probably at some point I, I, I will do them, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my camera with me. I'm going to go out there to the streets of Liverpool. I'm going to take my camera and I'm, I'm also sort of going to point and shoot and like, okay, record this guy and then I'm going to comment on him. Record another guy and then I'm going to comment on him. Record nicer people, dressy people and, and you know, but I'm going to spend like half an hour doing so and I'm sure I'm going to find some characters. I think I'm going to do that kind of videos because then I can sort of go back to my studio here and record and explain and, and say why I recorded that guy and what I liked, what I didn't, what didn't make sense. So maybe I'm going to do something like that. So watch out for that one. Um, as I was saying, do you think suit supply is cheap? I'm really in love with them. Nice fabrics, nice details. A 5,000 euro bespoke suit would be a nicer, but I think as young dude, the style quality price is perfect. Yeah, I've made that video, didn't I, about uh, suit supply in general. Um, it's If you type in suit supply, you're gonna find me probably number one still. I don't know, I was number one. I think I still am. Um, but if you look at that video, I'm actually talking about that they are the sort of perfect blend of those three things price, style, and quality. Um, there was one more thing. I was talking to a bespoke tailor uh, yesterday and we were chatting about sort of bespoke suits in general. And I said to him, how, how, how your clients react um, to you making a bespoke suit for like six weeks, you know, fully bespoke, hand-stitched everything, you know, uh, everything is done by an artisan of some sort, you know, making the little loopholes and the sleeves and everything is put together. And I said, how, how do they feel? How do the customer feel when one sleeve is slightly different to the other? When one um, sort of buttonhole is slightly different to the other? I was like, I was, do they appreciate the fact that it's actually took you know, someone a week to do it. And the bespoke tailor said to me that people usually don't. People usually don't understand what a bespoke suit is, that it's not the, um, nothing's gonna be perfect in that suit. Nothing's gonna be perfect uh, with a bespoke suit. It's gonna be okay. It's obviously gonna be quality, it's gonna be amazing, but it's not gonna be perfect. It's gonna be imperfect, human imperfect, but it's, it's great, it's bespoke, it's done by, by a person from scratch. Some people would, who understand that, they would just pay a fortune for that. As you said, 5,000 euro easily. But maybe for general public, made to measure is the way to go, not a, a, a fully bespoke suit. So, so just bear that in mind. If you are in love with bespoke and would like to get one created for yourself, just embrace the fact that it's actually not perfect, right? Okay. Um, right, okay, how's it saying? I know I noticed that uh, not going to uni in a three-piece yellow uh, window pane suit um, with a fedora and a pocket square and a pocket watch, haha. <laughs> but I think it will be pretty nice to just uh, take an inspiration from them. Yeah, it's um, it, it, that video is coming, don't worry. Roland Boggetts saying, is an Instagram also a theater with people who show their sponsored clothes? Oh, don't get me started, Roland, on that. Sponsored clothes. I had a very good debate with uh, with a huge Instagrammer about this. And he said to me, well, but that's, 
that's the business we are in. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's business's fault, it's everyone's fault that we actually allow them to do that. But, but isn't that because our, sh our sort of um, attention shifted from TV to somewhere else, to the mobile and to things like that? So the advertisers, of course, have to sort of go out there and, and sort of find those influencers with those contacts. So we, it's our fault because we moved from TV, we moved from newspaper to Instagram and Facebook. So, you know, we are the reason why they're there, right? Um, but I know also that massive company in the UK, fragrance company, um, I was chatting with them the other day and they were saying that um, they've got their own department for PR and influencers. Four or five people sitting there making deals and, you know, putting stuff out there. Insane. So there is lots of money there for that. Um, Yeah, Hoser has got absolutely sort of right there, the bespoke suit and the imperfection and what it is and what it means um, to people. So mm, be aware of that. If you are fully aware that, that the bespoke suit means that it's going to be imperfect, perfect. You know, that's how you should think about it. You know, if it's not going to, it's going to fit you like a glove. That That's no doubt. If it doesn't, then that's all a problem. Um, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. Don't worry. So it's, so it's all good. Um, yeah, so it's going to fit you like a glove, but it's, um, it's going to be imperfect in, in many ways. So. And I think on that note, it's important to understand that um, maybe not all of the shirts, maybe not all of the clothes, maybe not all of the suits or shoes have to be done by an artisan in Italy, meaning they don't have to cost that much. Uh, you know, and you can enjoy a lot more your clothes when they are actually, you know, made by, by I don't know, H&M, Primark or something like that. You know, obviously be aware, I've talked about that before, um, you know, the pricing structure in Primark or H&M obviously mean that, that, that people must, must have earned a pennies for that t-shirt to, uh, to make. Um, but if, if you enjoy that piece, if you enjoy that shirt from... Um, from Levi, I, 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 as I said before, I, I purchased that today um, from Cheshire Oaks. It cost me 15 quid, probably cost them a pound to make. It cost me 15 pound to buy. But I thought I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to rock it. I'm going to style it. I'm going to, I'm going to be, you know, keep enjoying that shirt with, with its little details and, and, you know, and how it is and how it looks. It just looks nice. Everything is nice about this this shirt, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep rocking it. It's gonna be good. Um, I would say research everything, but be cynical as well. So if you um, you know don't just follow my advice about buying suit supply or or doing things, um, you know try it, especially with suit supply box office. I've, I've made a video about that last time we spoke uh, here on live YouTube, um, and it's. Uh, Easily, you can just do research online right now uh, without any problems. You can find out all the details you want. And if you do, um, make your own decision. You know, be cynical. Um, I want to show you something. That's me. Yeah, that's me. Can you tell? It's me. So, what I'm wearing here is one of my style mistakes that I made. Right? Do you like it? What do you think about it? What do you what do you think is not right here on this picture? Well, there's one thing not right apart from my ugly mug. Um, but of course, the orange jacket. Yes, there is lots of yes, there is lots of things bad about this. But one thing that I that I that I made a mistake here is I researched the company. Uh, Taylor for less, I think it was. I r it was a really nice picture, and I thought I need that jacket. You know, it was nice jacket, big lapels. Um, you know, my size. I can custom made it, custom fit. And you know what? I spent like probably ninety euros, maybe hundred euros on that jacket. I've got that jacket with me now, so I can show you. The fabric is. You can probably barely know and barely notice here. But the fabric is kind of, um, um, I would say cotton kind of fabric. It's not, it's 
it's nothing outstanding. The buttons are plastic. The lapels, how it fits me. Not a big wide lapels that I wanted, a tiny little lapels. I wanted notch, uh, sort of peak, they gave me notch. Um, the shoulders, they still don't fit me. Uh, it never fit me well. Um, I'll show you that now, but the shoulders are, are still sort of too big. But I don't like that jacket whatsoever. It's not my style. I, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel good about it. It's, you know, it's supposed to be double breasted. It's, it's, do you want it? I don't want it. Do you want it? I can, I can give it to you free of charge. It's okay. It's not my style. And I paid like 90 euros for it. It's terrible. And I, you know, I had just one wear out of it. That was the only time that I wore it. I also had to give it to a tailor. Uh, so it had to be refitted because it didn't fit me well. Um, there was lots of things wrong with that jacket and I made that style mistake. And going back to research, you know, I, I just like the Taylor for Less uh, spiel, online marketing message. And I thought, well, I, I, I need something tailor made for me. Um, you know, I thought orange would be, would be best. But no, I'm not gonna wear it, probably ever, unless it's gonna be to an, an event that I know I can somehow um, wear an orange, an orange jacket too. So, uh, so research everything. Don't forget also that um, you don't have to buy Goodyear welted shoes and UK made shoes only. It could be anywhere. Again, if you like it, you just buy it. You don't have to worry about those things. Um, if you're from the UK, uh, Cheshire Oaks is great. Uh, go and find out uh, Cheshire Oaks Design and Outlet. This is where I'm buying loads of my stuff. I also bought jeans. We cannot see them, but, but I've also bought some jeans today uh, from Levi, probably 50 quid. I slim fit 5.11s. I just wanted uh, them so badly that I finally bought one. Right, what else we've got? Um, I think it's all about how much you can spend and what you want to uh, support, right? Is it a personal decision? Um, yes, it's absolutely true. Um, if you are low on the budget, I I cannot recommend enough using eBay. You know, eBay is a place for me that's always been, you know, been a massive resource for even finding stuff. How much things cost? You know, how much we should charge for things? How much? What's the value? What's the real value of Levi jeans or 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 a next T-shirt or whatever else? Right? You 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 find it out those little resources, little gems, and then you just um, you just keep researching more, or or you just keep or end up buying something from eBay. So um, so it's it's a very much of a personal decision, personal taste. Um, yeah, uh, I think it, uh, yeah, I'm sure it was. Taylor for less, yeah. Taylor for less, custom made. That was the that was the jacket I, um, you know, I did I did there. Um, so well, I'm not saying maybe that was my mistake. Or maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I I wasn't um, sort of paying attention. I don't know. But uh, there was definitely something wrong with how we either measured myself or how they recommended me being measured. I don't know. But something went wrong. Uh, Roland is saying, I'm researching for a knitted silk tie. Wow, nice. Will 6.5, two and a half inch work with Lazio suit or is it too skinny for the wide lapels? Thanks for your suit supply review. Uh, Roland, pleasure as usual. Thanks for, for, for being here. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Uh, knitted silk ties, I haven't got any knitted silk ties. Um, Reason because they are everywhere these days. There's so many so knitted ties everywhere that I I I yeah I've I've got rid of all of mine. I have got I've got zero of them. But I'm not saying they're bad. I'm I'm saying that they are extremely popular. If you like to um, sort of play it safe, knitted tie, fantastic. Now, let's talk about the width. Six and a half centimeters. That is. I used to have some measure tape here. Oh, I have, hold on, hold on. So, every tailor should have a, 
should have a, a, a measuring tape. <sighs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. Right, six and a half centimeters, that's that much, right? Have I got any other ties? I think I've got my ties, hold on a sec. Let me show you my ties, some of the ties that I have got here on, in my store, right? So, thank you. So my ties, so well, that's one of my ties, it doesn't really matter if it's red and black. My ties are the widest point, so right at the end, they are around nine centimeters. You can barely see that. That's around nine centimeters. So obviously knitted tie is gonna be a lot less. This is sort of normal classic sort of width tie that goes well with your wide lapels that are so popular these days, right? Six and a half, I think it's actually wide for a knitted tie, but it's good. I, I, wide is good. I don't really like, like super skinny um, uh, sort of ties, and I was never a fan of them. I used to have one when I was like 19, which was like 55,000 years ago. Um, but it's I haven't had one since then. I think I'm more of a, of a classic sort of menswear style kind of guy. So I would, I would, I would usually go for the sort of wider lapels. You know, this one is actually made made by us, but but it doesn't really matter. It's just a, a, a sort of wide lapel at the end, so it sort of matches the, the, the lapel width. And that's what you have to really pay attention to. Nothing else really matters apart from the, uh, the how wide are your lapels. That's really what that is. Knitted ties, as I said, you know, nice, but there is so many of them. Uh, Jose saying, just another question. Am I kind of, uh, just another question. I'm kind of a, the suit business, uh, I'm kind of in the suit business as part of my job. Right, okay. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, uh, but when I compare suits from Hugo Boss, uh, Windsor or Dressler for 600 to 12,000 euros to suit supply, I don't think that Hugo Boss can beat suit supply fabric construction details. Um, even some Skabal suits we have are just a bit nicer, but they cost twice as much. Yeah, suit supply, suit supply baby. Um, I, I, you know, it's um, all in, suit supply, nothing else matters. I would agree, Hugo Boss is, a, Hugo Boss is such an overpriced uh, uh, sort of brand. I hope they're not, you know, listen to us right now and hopefully that they're not gonna block my channel, but they are so overpriced, you know. Um, no, keep asking questions about suit supply. I, I love answering those questions because I've been with the brand, meaning with the brand, wearing the brand since 2014, I think. So I had lots of dealings with suit supply. Uh, Skabal, that's another sort of um, fabric manufacturer. They also obviously make suits, but they're very uh, much known of, of a, being a fabric manufacturer. So they're making some really nice top end, like absolutely top end um, fabrics. Rather than saying, I don't see much knitted ties in Belgium, so look at me. Um, yes, you are very lucky then. I, uh, yeah, I used to have a knitted tie. I'm just thinking if I had one just to see how what my... But I think I was so embarrassed of, of wearing it that I probably didn't end up having it or, 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 or just donated it somewhere, I don't know. I haven't seen that knitted tie for a while, so I don't know. But it's, yeah, knitted tie, six and a half centimeters. It's okay. Um, I, I, what I would go, okay, knitted tie. What I would go for is a navy knitted tie or something darker, like dark brown or something that, that sort of color. Uh, so it's gonna complement well with, um, you know, your check suit if you've got something, white shirt. You know, it, it, you want that knitted tie to be so, blending in but like not matching colors but like completely filling the outfit rather than you know um one with like yellow dots or so like you, you don't want it to stand out i would say because you just want people to say oh it's, ve it's a very nice tie kind of not even thinking oh that's knitted tie or this or silk or whatever else as long as it matches your width of your lapels um you, you you're good to go you know how's it saying fabrics yes um we have like sample fabric books from Skabal in the office. Crazy colors and quality if just had money. Yes, yeah, Skabal yeah, is very good, but uh, I think 
and they call it coupons so you can actually you don't have to buy like 60 or 70 meters roll which obviously would cost you i don't know let's say 50 euros per meter or, or 100 euros per meter you can buy coupons and what that means is that's how make to measure tailors work usually where they could buy let's say uh, i don't know four meters just to make one suit right and they will um sort of pay maybe 250 euros per meter or 200 euros per meter like a lot more uh, so therefore that's why scabal is so expensive because people don't usually store those crazy fabrics no one would want those crazy fabrics you know um, so th so that's what that is um, and <laughs> you mean coupons is that is that what you mean um, and it's and it's and you know and that's what that's what you've got um, so I know I know lots of uh, sort of tailors have got uh, scabal or, or or Holland and Sherry and all the other things um, in their store, but they actually don't store it. So they have to order those coupons from the manufacturer and they pay fortune for that. But obviously they don't pay, you know, the end customer is, pay, is paying for it. So therefore those suits cost, um, you know, like, you know, 2,000 pounds or 2,500 pounds, whatever. We also make made to measure and I think starting price is 1,200. Yeah, okay. What's your company? Just uh, maybe you can share the link here for people to go and have a look. Uh, Nathan, sorry, Nathan, I missed your question. Nathan was saying, sorry, how wide was your tie? I just went to get mine to check. Uh, how wide? Mine was nine centimeters. I think that I've measured that in the sort of widest part, which if you look at, have I got my jacket anywhere? Hold on. Let me just bring a jacket. Uh, let's say, well, okay, let's say that one. You probably may have seen me uh, sort of review, and this is the Hudson Fit from Suit Supply. So that sort of jacket uh, you probably have seen. And if you measure the, um, you know, the width of the lapel on that jacket, I guess it's going to be probably more than nine centimeters or around that. Yeah, it's like 10 centimeters. So the width of that lapel is around 10 centimeters. So yeah, perfect. That that would have been perfect match for that. Um, if you had that, um, I think Roland, right, was asking a question. If you had that sort of slimmer uh, fit knitted or slimmer tie, silk tie, um, I think I also had sort of more dressier a version of a suit. I also made a video about that suit. It's a suit uh, from, well, we made it, my company made it, but basically what it is, is, uh, is a Vitale Barberis Canonico fabric. Uh, where is it? Yeah, so it's like Vitale Barberis uh, fabric, so very nice fabric. But if you look at the, uh, the lapels, that lapel is like seven, maybe seven and a half. So it's obviously a lot less, it's a peak lapel, so obviously you would measure it across there. So it's like seven centimeters. So then it's very close to your um, six and a half Roland. So, so maybe, you know, you can, you can sort of keep that in mind. Um, then of course you've got completely different lapels for different jackets, um, which I'm sure you know about, but just so, uh, so we're on the same page. I'm just looking what else I've got, hold on a second. Ah, this is very nice. This one I got from eBay. I also made a video about this one. This one is from Austin Reed, a UK brand, uh, sort of very old, sort of English style of tailoring. Um, and this one has got, this lapel is like 11 centimeters, so a lot bigger than, um, than any others that I have. Um, I'm actually gonna put that one on sale um, on eBay. Uh, probably this week. I'm, I want to. I want to run an experiment. I want to see how much people can make uh, out of a suit of e from eBay. You know. So if you, um, you know, if you end up buying a suit from eBay, uh, what can you sell it for? Uh, I bought it for like thirty quid. I think there is a video about this, uh, and I and I was wondering how much uh, can I actually sell it for. So, so we'll see what happens. Um, Yes, um, I've got an exam in two days, says Jose, uh, but this is way more fun than studying. <laughs> you seem like a great, great person. Thank you so much. 
let me know what you're studying. Maybe we can help somehow collectively. Uh, it's a small store in Germany called Robert Ley, the, the uh, company that Hose was, I think it's Joe's or Hose, you tell me how I should pronounce it because I'm, I'm probably uh, butchering every time I say your name, so apologies for that. Um, loving that you're showing us your suits, I find it very interesting. I've got at the moment too many suits and too many jackets. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got too many. I cannot wear them enough. And that's obviously eight, including this piece of bullshit um, of a jacket. So I've got eight jackets right now. Uh, that's definitely too many. I need to I need to scale it down to like maybe four or five. So I crave for some more. Um, I know which one I want to get rid of, like sell. But I don't know. I mean, it's difficult. If you try to sell, you have to obviously do do that through eBay. That's the only way to sell it properly. And if you do, then you know, then, then you can get anything between whatever you paid for, uh, um, you know, up until maybe you're going to make some profit. But who knows? Maybe when I put it on sale on eBay, maybe I'll I'll, uh, I'll throw in some pocket squares or something else with it. So maybe people are going to be more willing to buy it straight away. So we'll see. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who's in. We had at, at a period of time 11, 12 people here. Right, we're down to six, so we must be obviously doing some rubbish talking here. Uh, business exam is about corporate finance. Oh, boh, bollocks. Uh, I've done my MBA as well at the Manchester Metropolitan University here, maybe four years ago. Had some corporate finance, but believe me, it's not something that I would, um, I would know how to help you with anyhow. So, so you're on your own, buddy, unless anyone else can help you. Um, I think I want to leave you with something. I want to leave you with um, this idea that you you buy things and you justify spending money on things based off on um, how many times you're going to wear it, right? So if you are spending 90 quid here and you're going to wear it once, not a good investment, you know, I spend 30 quid on this one. Um, I had some alterations done, so I maybe spent another 10, 15 pounds on it. Uh, I wore it maybe four or five times. But what I'm thinking about is, I'm thinking about selling it. So that's a slightly different beast, because if you're buying something to sell, um, like I very often, when I buy iPhones and things like that, I'll buy a nice camera. You know, I'm using, for all my YouTube, I'm using this um, Canon 7 um 70d camera right and i probably spend like 500 pounds on it it doesn't matter if i want to upgrade this camera to a newer camera i could easily sort of sell this for 350 right now and buy something for you know 500 pounds again or 600 pounds again because obviously those prices for new equipment goes down as it gets older so um so you know maybe to uh you know next year this year i don't know maybe i'm also going to sort of up my game in that respect i recently also bought i'll show you also whilst we're talking about equipment this bad boy uh, this is a, a rode ntg mic uh, ntg2 and it is um it's making me sound like fucking porn star i'm just amazing this voice is like coming from nowhere you know um it's extremely good microphone and I spent like 100 quid on it. I spent some bits and pieces to get it working with camera and with iPhones and with whatever else. And it's, ah, the, the sound, man, is amazing. So, um, so yeah, invest in that. There is, because it's not spending money, it's just investing. And then when you sort of decide to move on to the next thing, um, you all of a sudden, you know, spend, spend more stuff on other things and, and replace it. Man, I hope your channel gets big, but I also hope you don't lose the originality and you sell your soul to companies. I really think you are bringing lots of value. Thank you so much. No, I thank you. Thank you so much for, for being around. Um, with regards to selling my soul, uh, I've, I, I intend to make no money out of this channel. Um, and I hope this may continue for as long as I, I want. I know lots of smaller YouTubers like doing 
Patreon sites and this and support me. I don't care. I've got, you know, I need to work out how can I support myself. I don't want you to spend any money on me. Like, that's crazy, right? Uh, all, I, all I can ask from you is just your attention, your comments, your likes or dislikes or opinions in general. Um, that's what I can ask for. You know, I, I don't want you to pay me any money for what I'm doing like crazy. Um, but I don't think that, um, you know, companies start sending me stuff. Like I'm Mr. No One, right? I've got like 720 um, subscribers or something like that. It, it, try to compare that with... Um, thank you so much. I tried to compare that with, you know, massive channels, 100,000. You know, I get sent stuff. I've got companies reaching out to me every week, like twice a week sometimes, saying to me, can you review this? Can we send you this? Like me, Mr. No One. So imagine that, how many times those 150,000, 250,000, 500,000 subscribers channels, like how often they have to get approached. Like it must be mind boggling because there's so much money. You know, there's so many companies starting the business and, and wanted to grow on YouTube and wanted to expand the audience. So what's the best way? Well, send it to YouTube, but they can talk about it, right? Um, I got a company called, uh, I think it's Cartel. Yeah, it was a company called Cartel, sent me some watch to review, which I didn't end up doing. Didn't feel right. I've got a company, I've uh, forgotten the name. Um, um, that sent me some belts because I've, I've reviewed and some belt uh, as well and I had to um, sort of, um, you know, they asked me whether they can send it. I said, yeah, please send it. I'll, I'll just have a look. I haven't reviewed them yet. I, I, I will at some point because I think it's a, it's a sort of good, useful product. Uh, I'm just going to have another company from Chicago sending me a shirt. So I've customized a shirt. That video is going to go up as well soon. Uh, so I've customized the shirt with them uh, and I've ordered one shirt just to see how it looks. Um, but I always say to everyone, I'm going to give it a, a, a an honest opinion and that's what they can wish for. And that's what they usually looking for. You know, companies usually wouldn't dare to send you material free of charge or, or, or for some small charge to say to you, uh, say this, don't say that, because no one's going to go for that. I mean, if people do, they're crazy unless it's a sponsored video, but that's different. That's like a watching an ad, you know, if you're watching Aaron Marino or Jose Zaniga or anyone, you know, of that sort, Antonio Centeno, anyone like that, you know, that's their business. Like they live off that. That's their core. That's who they are. So of course they have to uh, sort of um, make money out of that and they do. So they do those promotional sort of stuff, but I, I, I don't think I'll be doing that at any time soon. And, and if I do, you will know that that I'm doing one. So don't worry. Um, yes, thanks for the chat. Thank you so much. The only question I ask myself, <laughs> um, Roland is asking, the question uh, I ask myself before buying an item is, will I still wear this in five years? <laughs> yes, classic menswear. We talked about that before. If you buy a pinstripe suit, are you going to wear it in five years? Yes. Are you going to wear any pinstripe suit? Nah, maybe not. Maybe some of the style will change. But the one I showed, just showed you, you're going to wear it in five years. No problem. Five years is also a, a, a long period of time. I would go maybe two, two years or three years. Like five years is a, is a, is a, is a, is a long, is a, too long in my opinion because um, uh, things will change and things... You know, is, is your suit going to fit you as well in five years as it, as it fits you now? I don't know. I mean, you can put on weight, you can lose weight, you can change, your body shape can change, uh, things can change. So I, I would easily go for two years if, think about it, are you going to wear this in two years? And if the answer is yes, buy it, buy it. And then justify to yourself afterwards because, of course, you've done the research, you looked uh, cynically at um, you know, where you saw this and who recommended that to you and you think, do I really need it? And if, you know, and if you're going back and forth and that's a period of maybe two or three days, two or three weeks, and you think, well, you know, I really would do with, with sort of, you know, white sneakers or whatever, just go and get them. <laughs> um, regarding sneakers, I saw a very good graph today about sneakers. Apparently only people in the sort of north 
east of the US call it sneakers, the rest of the world, or the rest of the US call them tennis shoes or something. Tennis shoes, really? Um, so, white sneakers, yes. Uh, I've done a video, of course, about white sneakers and why and how you can keep it white, so you can watch that as well. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who's here. I can only see if you are making yourself known. So if you, um, if you are here and you haven't commented yet, just let us know that you're here and you're watching because I can see you here, but I don't know who you are. So, Sunday evening here in sunny Liverpool. Um, half past ten in the evening. I think it's time to wrap things up. Thank you so much, Roland, for being around. Um, thank you so much, brother. Um, I think I may be doing those Sunday um, live videos sort of more frequently, just talking about, you know, some stuff, some news, um, some stuff that I prepared, some stuff that I, um, you know, that I'm really passionate about, and uh, you know, how can we enjoy this journey more? Um, you know, and how do we? Um, uh, you know how we can enjoy clothes more how we can enjoy what we do more um, as long as you with me oh Nate is saying I have to rewatch kept cutting out and losing sound issue my end I'm sure right okay I hope because I hope I wasn't producing this and no one was no one could hear me but I think uh, Roland and Jose and um, and um, uh, I think it was Rob before uh, could hear me okay, so Bobby, yes. Good, ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoy your rest of your Sunday wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm enjoying this. Yes, there you go. Belgium high speed internet by the looks of it, Roland. Very good. Roland, are you part of that Facebook group as well? The, the Beyond three piece suit kind of thing. Um, what's happening there? I've, I've, been seeing a lot of activities recently. Uh, maybe you can just um, say that or p paste a link to that group um, if it's still open. I don't know whether it is or not. Um, maybe to everyone else if people want to join this. It's a group about, again, sort of men's uh, menswear, but it's like more like style. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Roland. So just said that he posted a link uh, for the live stream. Thank you so much. But yeah, I I, I, I see some activities there. Uh, so if it's um, you know if it's it's a live group, maybe you can share that information here as well. I've been talking to a guy in uh, um, like a like a sort of YouTube digital marketer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roland. Um, about sort of YouTube and uh, and where YouTube is going, where Facebook is going. He said to me that Facebook group seems to be sort of growing um, daily. Everyone is sort of putting the effort in Facebook groups. Uh, I haven't got a Facebook group. Um, the the YouTube guy told me to, to make one as soon as. So who knows, maybe we'll also make some uh, exclusive content for my uh, for my Facebook group. I, I'm still not convinced how I should run it, so maybe uh, maybe we're going to do it at some point. But uh, until now, I'm, I'm active in other groups. So if you want to know more about anything that I do, or I've got any style question, you know, let me know. I've got information about a very bad connection, so I think it's time to go. See ya. <laughs>